because CBS, the mainstream media, the rest of the news organizations don't want to take down this national security state. They're a part of it. They're the front line of the propaganda. You're not going to hear these kinds of stories. You're not going to hear what the NSA is doing. You're not going to hear what uh, the CIA is doing from the mainstream media. That's why it's important for you to support InfoWars. It's why it's important for you to support the Drudge Report. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the program, we now have iOS 9 from Apple is going to try to present itself as a news aggregator. Why? Because Drudge is putting out information and stories that the mainstream media would not cover. He began that way by covering the Monica Lewinsky scandal, the perjury of a sitting president with a legal degree, Bill Clinton. That's how he got his start, by covering the stories that mainstream media would not touch. And now, Drudge is the largest news aggregator in the world, in the world, and does everyone an incredible favors, a, a huge, very important to the freedom of press. Absolutely important freedom of press. But, of course, companies like Apple, they would like to replace that just for business reasons, but also they may have some political ties in that as well. They have uh, been playing footsie with the NSA. We know that from Apple. It's very, very clear that's what's been happening. So it's very important to keep a free and open press. Very, very important. Let's take a look at what uh, just happened in the last week or so. Though, of course, over the weekend, we had the story about 29% of the people supporting a military coup. Isn't that interesting? I even find it more interesting that we've got yet another story of a crazy West Point professor. And we've had these stories in the past. We had the retired history professor of West Point who had put out the scenario in South Carolina saying that the Tea Party had allied with Islamic fundamentalists. And that was the, the background training scenario. Remember that in Darlington, South Carolina? That was the scenario that they were pushing. Well, now we've got another West Point law professor who called on the U.S. military to target critics of the war on terror. Here's what he had to say. This is a story that was broken by The Guardian uh, at the end of August. And he said, um, this is William C. Bradford. He said, as part of a war against undifferentiated Islamic radicalism, that war ought to be prosecuted vigorously, he wrote, even if it means great destruction, innumerable enemy casualties, and civilian collateral damage. Now, this guy could get on the stage of the GOP debate because they could care less about our foreign policy. That's what they're always arguing for. We don't care how many uh, people die from collateral damage. We don't care how many casualties we don't care how great the destruction, we just need to take these guys out. And that's going to make us all safer, isn't it? No, it isn't. But here's what he had to say. He called his paper The Treason of the Professors, and he wrote it in French. I guess it would be Treason des Professeurs. He said, the critical law of armed conflict academy is an Islamic fifth column. And, of course, when he referred to treason of the professors, and when he wrote that in French, it was a self-conscious reference to a purge of French intellectuals in the 1920s. It was absolutely amazing, some of the things that he had to say. Uh, uh, let me read you a quote that he had uh, about uh, people who were sympathetic to Islamicist aims, he said, ought to be imprisoned, attacked, and as implied even killed. That's what drew the most criticism, they say. But of course, when he says that you're sympathetic to it, the way that he defines this is anybody that opposes the foreign policy of war abroad. See, if you oppose their war, remember George Bush? You're either with us or against us. That's where this essentially leads, okay? You have treasonous scholars who don't support his all-out total war against Islam. That makes them Islamic collaborators. They're not funding the Islamic terrorists. Actually, that's our government that funds the Islamic terrorists, okay? They created ISIS to take down Syria. But if you point that out and you say, we don't want to have a war with Syria, then he says, you're an Islamic sympathizer. You need to be jailed or imprisoned. That was actually what his paper was going through. So he was actually uh, fired. But this, let me read you this quote. Doubts and disputes about this war should be muted, lest around them coalesce a new set of self-imposed restraints that prevent Western forces from waging war with sufficient ferocity and resolve so that either Islamicism is discredited 
and the political will of Islamic people to prosecute a jihad collapses, or if necessary, all who countenance or condone Islamicism are dead. So, we need to have doubts and disputes about the war be muted. How do you do that? You do that by controlling the press. And understand that it goes way beyond Apple trying to become their own news aggregator to uh, replace the Drudge Report. We had a year or so ago, maybe it was two years ago, there was a law that had prohibited the Voice of America and Radio Free Europe from broadcasting or operating in America. They were set up as propaganda institutions, but they were only going to be used abroad. They were only going to be used against our enemies. But they fairly quietly, of course, mainstream media didn't talk about this very much. They removed that prohibition. So now Voice of America and Radio Free Europe can propagandize Americans overtly. Not content that the mainstream media was doing a good enough job. They didn't feel like the mainstream media was doing a good enough job. So now they're going to do that above board. They're going to do it openly. Remember what James Madison said. He said the uh, means of defense abroad will become instruments of tyranny at home. And that's true of the First Amendment as well as a physical war. We are heading into a position where Google is going to try to delist uh, uh, news articles. They, they already do that to a large extent, but they're going to push overtly and deliberately bury news reports. We're going to have uh, aggregator sites that become embedded into your iPhone, like the new iOS 9 system, to try to make it very easy for you to use their aggregator instead of going somewhere else to look for the news. If you don't fight that, you are going to be losing the information that you need to be an informed citizen. And how dangerous is this? Well, over this weekend, we had an Infowars.com, a YouGov poll that was done by YouGov, and uh, I believe it was CBS at the time. 29% of Americans would support a military coup. Think about that. Think about how dangerous that is. And then ask yourself, maybe that's already happened. And even more than 29% are okay with it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. We've got a couple of amazing stories here. One of them, a proud mother refuses $900,000 payout from the police who killed her black son because they wanted to gag her. Another one, a black lady who was kept in New York uh, for eight days, injected with heavy drugs, uh, considered uh, kept in a psychological evaluation ward because she insisted that the BMW was her car. They wouldn't believe that. We're going to cover those stories here. Before we do, I want to let you know this hour of the uh, Alex Jones Show has been brought to you by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com, products like Knockout. Knockout is back in stock. It was one of the many products that we frequently sell out of. Uh, Knockout is the all-natural sleep support formula by InfoWars Life. I've had trouble falling asleep for, at night for years. I've tried every kind of remedy under the sun. This is something that really works. I've taken melatonin. That's helped me when I travel with uh, jet lag and do, uh, like going to some place that has multiple time zones, like going to Europe. That is a good way to reset your biological clock. This has that, but it's got other ingredients as well that are safe and effective. Things like valerian root extract, GABA, melatonin, chamomile flower extract. L-tryptophan, many other components. L-tryptophan, of course, you know that you get sleepy when you eat a big Thanksgiving turkey dinner, don't you? It's not just the amount of food that you eat, but it's the turkey. And the reason that you get sleepy after turkey is because of L-tryptophan. These are natural ingredients that will help you to get sleep, help you to get rest. You can take a look at the uh, reviews that are on our, our site at InfoWarsLife.com. Here's a couple of those. Uh, Bob near the forest, he says, Dingman's Ferry, Pennsylvania, he said, the blend is exceptional. For years, I have periodically taken valerian root or melatonin and get mixed effects and usually feel a jet lag style feeling the next day. Knockout worked over an hour and a half, and I felt very awake the next morning. Take a look at the reviews at InfoWarsLife.com. Again, Knockout is back in stock. If you're having difficulty sleeping, and all of us have more difficulty sleeping as we get older, it is now back in stock at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, going back to these articles I mentioned, the first one in Daily Mail. A proud mother refuses $900,000 payout because the police who shot her black son said, if you take this, 
you are not going to be able to talk about him publicly. She said to me, it was a gag order. Like, here's here's 900000 here's a million dollars. Let's just call it a million dollars. It's so close to a million dollars. Here's a million dollars. Don't ever say Darian's name again. And she refused to be bought out. Good for her. If we would refuse to be bought out, if we would refuse to sacrifice our freedom for the promise of safety, that's the bargain. That's the Faustian deal they're always presenting to you. They're always saying national security trumps everything. Say national security trumps your individual liberties. We're going to make you safe. Don't worry, we've got these police who are going to serve and protect you. Right. When you give up your freedom, you are nothing but a slave and a prisoner. We've said it before. I'll say it again. Prisoners and slaves are never free. And that's what you are if you don't have liberty. Liberty has to be the first and foremost consideration. If you have liberty, you may get safety. But you'll never have safety if you give up your liberty. Here's another one. This isn't your BMW, they told her. This woman, here's what they did to her. They injected her with heavy drugs. They forced her to spend eight days in a psychological evaluation ward. She was given a $13,000 hospital bill. Here's how it happened. She was pulled over September the 12th. She was pulled over back in 2014. She's sitting at a red light. And a cop comes up to her and says, why aren't your hands on the steering wheel? Why aren't your hands on the steering wheel? Wow. And so she says, well, I'm not driving. He didn't like that answer. I'm going to tell you what happened after we come back from the break. This is an amazing story. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I was, I'm was i going to finish the story that I began in the last segment. The story about the uh, black lady in New York. She stopped at a stoplight. This is a, almost a year ago, September the 12th, 2014. She stopped at a red light in Harlem. And a cop asked her, why aren't your hands on the steering wheel? And so she talked back to him and said, I'm not driving. I'm listening to music, and I'm, I'm stopped at the stoplight. He didn't like that answer. He told her to get out of the car. He arrested her. He took her down to the precinct. She was held for several hours, then released without charge. But she was told that she could not pick up her 2003 BMW 325CI until the following day. She goes back the following day to get her car. The police officers refused to believe that she could own that car, maybe because she's black. I don't know. But they refused to say that they, they said, that's not your car. We're not going to give you that car. It's too luxurious. You, you know, you don't own that car. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So she insisted and got angry, I'm sure, that that was her car. So how did they respond? Well, they put her in a psychological evaluation ward for eight days, injected her with drugs, and she wound up with a 13 thousand dollar hospital bill now they're going to wind up with a lawsuit and they should end up with a lawsuit i've experienced this not even as a as a black man or you know i've had the same type of harassment myself from the police i remember when hurricane fran came through north carolina took out our power uh, and for the only time that we were in business we had our stores closed for several days because there was absolutely no power anywhere in the area where we had our stores. One of the stores, actually two of the stores, uh, got power back after three or four days. And uh, so we kept those stores open. Towards the end, as it was starting to get dark, we had some police officers come by and tell us that we had to shut our business because they had enacted a curfew. And I said, oh, really? Are you going to shut down Walmart across the street? Oh, no, we're not going to shut down Walmart. You have to shut down. That made me really angry. But we were already shutting down because there wasn't that much traffic out there. So we went ahead and shut that down. We went to the next store. Uh, my, my, my wife was with me. My sons were young. They were in car seats. They were in the back. And we go to the next store. She goes in to uh, get the daily receipts out of the, um, out of the safe. And I'm stopped. And, I, and I've got the engine running. I've got the two kids in the back. And I let them out of the car seat. And a cop comes over to me and says, uh, you can't park here. There was nobody else anywhere in the entire shopping center. Nobody else me. I've got the engine running. And I said, I'm not parked. I'm stopped. And he goes, hmm. And he looks at the kids who are out of their car seats and goes, you got to get them back in the car seats. I said, I'm not driving. That's why they're out of the car seat. I'll put them back in the car seat when I start to drive. He didn't like that. He had to find something. So he goes, 
uh, give me your license. And so he starts to write me. I said, fine, we'll talk about this in court. At that point, my wife comes out and starts locking